Now, we've seen over the past few years ancient sites being plundered by terrorist groups for money. Well, here in Istanbul, the United Nations has begun a two-week meeting on global heritage. We'll get an update from the UNESCO meeting in just a moment. But first, this report from Joel Flynn. Syria's war has lasted more than five years and almost half a million people have been killed. It is a human tragedy and also a cultural one. The ancient city of Palmyra was once one of the most important cultural centers in the world, much of it dating to the first and second centuries. But now most of it is in ruins. Rebuilding will cost tens of millions of dollars, according to UNESCO, which wants to make sure it and other sites are properly protected, even in times of war. In Yemen, Syria and Iraq, cultural heritage is attacked. Cultural diversity is attacked. It is a war crime, a weapon of war, a strategy for cultural cleansing that targets human lives, historical sites, schools, journalists, institutions of knowledge and free thinking. UNESCO is currently trying to protect more than 1,000 sites in 163 countries. Another 26 sites are under consideration this week to be added to that list. War and conflict are just one threat to them, though. Add in urbanization and climate change, and the preservation picture becomes almost impossible to put a price on. Well, troubling times indeed for culture, but it's the local economies too in these parts of the world that are also suffering, as Charlotte Dubinsky found out at UNESCO's meeting here in Istanbul. One of the things being discussed at this conference is the importance of world heritage sites to local economies, including in Syria, which has six world heritage sites, which at the moment have been under attack since the conflict began more than five years ago. Well, let's discuss that importance now with Mehtib Rosler, who is the Director of Heritage for UNESCO. Thank you very much for joining me. You're welcome. How important are these sites to local economies in areas like Syria pre the conflict? I think World Heritage Sites generally are a driver for regional and economic development in all parts of the world. Uh, but uh, in Syria you can uh, remember that Palmyra was one of the most visited sites. It's uh, a key archaeological site in the region. It merges uh, the heritage of the West and the East. So it was actually a key tourist destination. There were 50,000 people living in the city of Palmyra and living practically on World Heritage. You talk about Palmyra, which has been very well discussed in the past, but also there's the ancient city of Aleppo and Damascus, which have seen huge destruction. What concern is there that that won't be able to be repaired and attract people in when this conflict ends? Now, Damascus is hardly touched, but Aleppo is severely affected and has been uh, partially uh, destroyed. So uh, UNESCO has really uh, to look at the coordination of all the activities uh, on rebuilding uh, projects, especially for historic cities where people, they want to move back in. And I think this will be one of the key issues. We did already in July 2015 a workshop on the restoration, reconstruction, rebuilding of Aleppo. And it's not just reconstruction of sites. Many of these sites have actually been looted. What concern is there that those artefacts are lost forever? We have a huge concern about looting uh, since um, also decision uh, resolution 2199 of the Security Council. Um, uh, we are working very closely with the different actors, with Interpol, um, with the World Customs Organization to retrieve looted objects. And as we speak now, there is a, a meeting uh, where the Turkish government uh, presents its activities to find looted objects. Do we have any understanding of just how big this black market is? The black market uh, is huge, um, but um, UNESCO doesn't give any precise figures because it's very difficult to get them. Uh, there are some figures in the art world, etc. But what is important for us is that we work um, with due diligence, with the art market. We have now established cooperation with the big actors there, with Sotheby's, for example. And I think this is where we need to work all together, both governments and private actors, to find the 
polluted objects and to work towards restitution. Mechke Rossler, thank you very much for joining us. That's the director of Heritage for UNESCO. And that will be one of the discussions that continues here over the next few days. As they also name the new sites that get that status of World Heritage Site, and that will hopefully boom those economies. Sean Dubinsky reporting there.